Death and legal. We're stuck in the present day. I wanted to go and talk about fetch a little bit because, ah. and I know that's completely switching gears. No, it's fine. So if you're good to do that, I, yeah, I just absolutely. don't want to. I don't want to get too far into the now without going into the um, yeah, yeah, uh, from access into. How did you? Because that and, and for our audience, you know, fetch, and we're gonna play a clip. Gonna you. clip, a little okay. clip here. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you, Stewie. Thank you, Stewie. Stewie. Here's a clip from um, Fetch with Ruff Ruffman. Ruff Ruffman here, and strange things are afoot. Or a paw, in my case. <laughs> a thief broke into the National Jewelry Museum last night and stole the Poodle Diamond. The diamond was stolen by what appears to be an extraordinarily large chicken. Stay with me. However, if we apply the de-chickenizing filter, we see that the thief is actually my arch nemesis, Spot Spotnik, dressed as an extraordinarily large chicken. Clever dog. Hilarity. Amazing. No, really, this this show was on for five years on PBS. Yeah. 100 episodes? 100 episodes. Did incredibly well. Was very popular. Um, you know, it wasn't. <laughs> you know what I it was? I was just trying to be it, nice. It, <laughs> no, I mean, you know, if you just look at the ratings, it wasn't. I, I don't want to cut you off, but it's funny. I say it was popular because this show ended in 2010, right? Mm. My kid at that point was four years old. Ah. And... For me, uh, I'm a dad who kind of like now is, is, you know, sort of started to be reintroduced to children's programming and sure. television, of course, because I don't work in animation. So for me, in our house, it was on digital net, but in our house, that show was on. So to me, that rang as a popular show, as a show that Thank was you. at least well received by, at the very least, my own kid. Right. Um, and then when you read up on it and you read about the huge fan base that it has. I mean, as you were just talking earlier, off, it, off yeah. Mike, there are some fanatics, yes? A couple. And, um, and it's a great concept, I think. As a voice, as just from a voiceover perspective, it's one of the most creative things that you can do, I think. You know, when I did Kenny the Shark, I loved doing the show. I loved Kenny. It was my first, like, you know, lead in a cartoon. Sure. But it really is, and Peter Fernandez... You know, Speed Racer directed the first season. Wow. You know, rest in peace. Huge. Um, so that was a big honor. But it's three lines. Three times one line. Next line. Three times one line. Not a, a ton of creative input mm -hmm. from the talent, which is common. Mm -hmm. You know, you didn't write it. Yeah. But with Fetch, I auditioned for it. I got a call back. They didn't even have a title for the show yet. They were just wanted improv guys. And um, they... I got a call. They hadn't made a decision yet, but they liked some of my ideas and wanted me to come to a writer's meeting. Wow. Which they flew me. It's the first time I was ever flown anywhere by anybody. So it was like, I mean, it was to Boston. So, you know, plane up, plane down. It's all right. You know, you don't even go to the bed. It's, it's like, plane up, fly. plane down. And like, oh, well, you know. Still counts. Yeah, back in a plane with you, kiddo. <laughs> so uh, I'm like, I didn't have any ideas. I just did what they asked me to do. So it was weird. Yeah. Um, little did I know they had... They were casting me, they, but they were bringing me there to, like, headbang ideas for the show. What is the show? What do we want to make it? What do we want to call it? What are we going to name the character? How exciting, right? And so, you know, we're three quarters of the way into this thing, and, like, they're, I'm having input, and it's being received well. And then towards the end, they're like, we want to play some of the casting film. There's some that we really like. And I'm like, no, oh, I can see who got it now. Huh. You know, and then it was my audition. It was ha, tee hee, ha ha. You know, these are all the people that did Zoom. That's It's a very close knit family. These are all the Zoomers, former Zoomers that work oh, as I producers. See. I remember Zoom. It's basically Zoom with an animated dog. With a with dog some, yeah. You know, it's science. You got to have science in that show because that's how you get your funding. Yep. Uh, from the Arthur Vining Davis Foundation, the National <laughs> Science. You know, you got to do it. There'd be bullet points sometimes. There'd be a couple of monologues yeah, written. Glenn out. Berger, who is our, our head writer, um, who co wrote the book. Uh, the Spider-Man uh, book for the musical. For the musical, wow. Yeah. Turn off the dark. So, yeah. So, hopefully he's back in on, on Old Rough. And he writes for me very well. I mean, it didn't take long to, like, figure out and sure. easily write, like, dialogue. So, it was half written, half bullet-pointed and improv, Amazing. which is great. Right. Who does that, right? Like, you know? who, who does that formula with the, with the field you know, work? What do we do if we can't do this? And we'd sit there in meetings like, what if we do if we can't do this? We're having a problem coming up with this episode. I'm like, make it the dog's problem. Hmm. Your problem is his problem. Because everything's almost in real time. Mm -hmm. You know, all the challenges are done. If, if you're having a hard time making this happen, make it his problem. Love it. 
you know, pawn it off on him. And every episode was anticlimactic, which was genius. You know, and, and you know, if you want to talk about, you know, accents, I mean, there were characters in it. You know, I, I don't do accents very well. If you can yes, do them, you great. Do. But I had to do like this Scottish, you know, Give me the Scottish. Total, this Uncle McRuff montage, which is terrible, Ruff. You know, it's all ripping him off. Terrible. Horrible. <laughs> like insulting people from Scotland. And they had to do like a Swedish rock star like thing. And I would go to Glenn and I'm like, Glenn, I, I can't do a Swedish accent. And he's like, it's perfect. The worse, the better. I want to read what you said during the Daytime Emmy Award ceremony in 2010. This ring a bell? I said something during it because I didn't win. They don't usually let you talk. Well, let's see, let's at least mention the fact that you were nominated, which is huge. Five times a bridesmaid. It's incredible. <laughs> uh, I mean, that's that's a really big three deal. Long, <laughs> three long, three losses to a kid. Only once as a voice for the first season. The rest was writing. Gotcha. <coughs> it doesn't matter yeah. to me. A huge honor and and it is. It is. Except they that. make you pay for your way. They do not. They really? do. You know the primetime Emmys. They put you up, they give you the $1,000 gift bag, and yeah. you've got a front row seat. For the Creative Arts Emmys, it's a great hunt like the first year, I got a ticket, and I think GBH flew me out, mm -hmm. but you're really, it's in LA, you have to fly yourself out, you have to put yourself up in a hotel really? room. If you're there for the ceremony, it is a discount. You have to pay for your dinner ticket. Wow. You know, it's all that. I mean, it would cost me like $1,000 to take my wife and I to, to lose to Eartha Kitt. This, is, this goes right along this. The quote uh, that you put on your Facebook page during that time was, uh, Wow. It's such an impossible task going up against Sesame Street, Cyber Chase, and The Electric Company. So you have to consider the nomination as a win. Can't complain. PBS gave us 100 episodes and five seasons. Many good shows. Never saw that kind of time. Which I think was very gracious at that point. Yeah, but I'm also a hypocrite. Tell uh, me why. You know, that's a gracious thing I put on Facebook. But, you know, I was kind of pissed off. Mm -hmm. And look, Sesame Street's going to win every year. And yeah, it is, it is an honor to be nominated. And they send you a little certificate, and that's nice. And you frame it, and you put it on the wall. I mean, mm -hmm. shit. It is great. Yeah. You know, I got to do a show on a network that raised me. And that raised my kids. Well said. And that, to be on PBS, is... I mean, that's to me, that's the, that's the top of the mountain mm -hmm. for children's and it's a nice show and it doesn't talk down to kids and it's not, sn it's not snarky in a mean way. And you watch your kids grow up and they'll leave PBS eventually and they'll go on to Nick Jr. And then on to, you know, Cartoon Network and then they're gone. I'm happy that you skipped the Disney Channel in there. No, the Disney Channel. No, yeah, the Disney Channel. Oh. That's No, my daughter's heavy into the Disney Channel now. I know. I know. You know, that's, yeah. I mean, they just kind of go. And PBS seems to have this <clears throat> rap, despite their incredible success, that the kids eventually leave the network. And I felt that, like, Fetch was like, hey, no, you don't have to leave. Dude, this is kind of smart. The dog's kind of smart, Alecky. He was very the anti I think whoever the woman that wrote the Times article, you know, in a world of uh, eye rolling and whatever, being the the common children, you know, when your kids start rolling their yeah, eyes, right, and the reaction whatever, out of kids. Yeah, right. it's nice to know that there's still um, you can still go to a network where that's frowned upon. Yeah, you know, but we put just enough in where he is a little bit snarky and he is egotistical and he is full of himself. And he is kind of stupid. And he's wrong all the time. Like all the things that you, the, all his, you know, it allowed the kids to, to make mistakes because Ruff was completely just a mess. But didn't detract from. No, anything. it was lovable in, the, in a way that you would make, you know, fun of somebody you really love. Right. The kids ripped on Ruff. Ruff would rip on the kids. You know, all the points were arbitrary. It really was just about teamwork and science and, you know, it was just fun. And I would, I, I miss doing the character. Well, it's exciting to think that it might come money. back on some level. I hope so. That, you know, uh, we'll see.